The Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, organized an event titled The Rohingya's Plight, a pressing issue for the international community, on Monday on the sidelines of the 41st session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. Ambassador Nasima Bagli, OIC permanent observer to the United Nations based in Geneva, emphasized in her speech the OIC's long-standing commitment to the cause of Rohingyas and reiterated OIC's call on the Burmese authorities to take immediate and concrete state concrete steps to restore the basic human rights of the Rohingyas including the right to citizenship the session witnessed presentations by permanent representative of Bangladesh head of the EU delegation deputy permanent representative of Malaysia and representatives from the independent permanent human rights commission IPHRC and the United Nations high commissioner for refugees UNHCR the event stressed the need for Burmese authorities to ensure the accountability of the perpetrators of heinous crimes committed against the Rohingyas. It also urged Burma to take the necessary measures to enable and ensure a safe and dignified return of the Rohingyas to their homeland. The OIC has approved the allocation through the Islamic Solidarity Fund ISF, of new financial assistance for development and education to a number of its member states as well as for Muslim communities in non-OIC member states as part of its ongoing programs around the world. The new batch of assistance includes support for the Islamic University in Niger, the Solidarity Society for Charitable Action in Thailand, the Islamic Federation in Gambia President Mahmoud Abbas Institution, Hajj Najib Educational Center in Sri Lanka, King Faisal University in Chad, the Muslim Relief Society in Uganda, Ibn Saudi Educational Islamic Center in Uganda, under the Solidarity Hospital in Senegal, Indar Society in Senegal, Al Quds Smile Society in Palestine, and the Arakan Union of Rohingyas in Bangladesh and Malaysia. Al Othaimin said in a statement that these assistance grants underscore the OIC's solidarity with its member states and its supportive stand in favor of the Muslim communities around the world in pursuance of the noble mission it has been entrusted with. The OIC has earlier expressed its appreciation to the headquarter state Saudi Arabia chairman of the current summit's conference for its generous contribution of $9 million to the Islamic Solidarity Fund's budget to help it carry through its charitable programs for the benefit of Muslim communities around the world. The ISF's fundamental vision is geared towards the uplift of the dignity and intellectual level of the Muslim people and to extend material support to the Muslim countries to prop them up socially and culturally. The ISF also extends humanitarian emergency relief to Islamic states and Muslim minorities that may meet with natural disasters or crisis. Former UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon has expressed concern that monsoon floods could threaten the lives of Rohingya refugees in sprawling camps in Bangladesh. Ban, who was visiting in his role as the head of the Hague based Global Commission on Adaptation to Climate Change, or GCA, said he was saddened and dismayed by what he saw while visiting the Kutupalong camp Wednesday in the southern coastal district of Cox's Bazar, where more than 1 million Rohingya from Burma have fled military-backed persecution in their home country. Bangladesh has a history of violent cyclones but has reduced the number of casualties from such natural disasters by investing in roads and other public infrastructure, building cyclone shelters and training volunteers across its vast coastal region which has the world's largest continuous beach. Still, the UN's Children's Agency UNICEF said earlier this week in a statement that thousands of families living in the refugee camps and Bangladeshi communities in surrounding villages are at risk from flooding and landslides caused by heavy rainfall in the last few days. The situation is particularly grim in the camps, though many of the more than 4,000 families affected have been relocated to safer areas, it said. Two children drowned following heavy rains and two children were injured so far. It said that schools and other facilities serving more than 60,000 
and children have been damaged. It's just impossible to think of how all these young people live in this condition. I know that there are more than half a million young people, Ban told the Associated Press in an interview during his visit to the camps at Kutupalong. Bangladesh is one of the country's most vulnerable to climate change. On Thursday, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, or IFRC, said in a statement that heavy rains triggered landslides in camps in Cox Bazaar, prompting the agency to organize response operations in seven camps, where more than 8,500 people have been affected and over 1,800 shelters have been damaged or destroyed. It said the situation could be worse as the World Meteorological Organization forecasts that in July, Bangladesh will be hit by the highest amount of rainfall 2019, with more than 730 millimeter of rain expected over an average of 22 days. Ban was visiting along with the World Bank's chief executive officer, Kristalina Georgieva, and other commissioners of the GCA, which was initiated by the Netherlands and set up in 2018. Ban and Microsoft founder Bill Gates of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are co-chairs along with Georgieva. Ben and other CGA leaders could see vast areas of the Delta Nation of 160 million underwater as they flew on Air Force helicopters from Dhaka, the capital, to Cox Bazaar, Bangladesh. Of course, it's one of the most vulnerable countries and climate change is happening much, much faster, said Ban, who also met with the Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, to discuss the country's efforts to adapt to flooding, rising sea levels and extreme weather.